<laughs> All right, those are the Pink Mountain Tops uh, on CBC Radio 3 and uh, the song The Gayest of Sunbeams. Just saw those guys perform uh, at the Commodore a couple weeks ago and they performed alongside, well, on the same bill as uh, Dinosaur Jr. So uh, Stephen McBean got to plug into that, that sort of three tiered Marshall stack that was like, it was a wall of sound there. Uh, coming uh, definitely coming out of Jay Maskus, uh, Jay Maskus and his uh, amp setup, but it, it was uh, it sounded pretty awesome for uh, Pink Mountain Tops as well. We heard Cripple Creek Fairies in that set, uh, something off Fire in Your Hole, a song called Coming Closer. Uh, Calgary band there, uh, Castrells as well, the Raccoons from uh, a little bit western points uh, from Vancouver, uh, from Victoria, the Raccoons, a great song called Tangiers. Some John Epworth, and we started off with uh, Maybe Smith. That was our second installment there that we played uh, on our category of Buckies that we're looking at a little more, shining the spotlight on the category of most Canadian song. So, so, well, so far we've played a couple of the nominees, uh, Maybe Smith there at the top of that set, You Would Never Survive the Winters in This Province, uh, was the name of the tune. So who knows, maybe that's the one, uh, one of the songs that you want to vote for. Uh, you can get your voting on right now. You can uh, head on over to the website at cbcradio3.com and uh, cast your vote for Most Canadian Song, plus all of the other categories as well. We are asking the uh, poll question on the blog as well. Do you expect your musicians to be well-behaved? Uh, or maybe you expect them to misbehave. You can let us know your thoughts. We're getting some good input on the blog. Again, at cbcradio3.com or tweet us if you like. We'll uh, happily take that, and uh, we're going to get back to some of your comments shortly, but right now, uh, a bit of business at hand. Joining me in the studio is, uh, or shall I say are, the vocalist and guitarist and uh, multi-instrumentalists of a five-piece band from Toronto that have been around uh, for a short time, only since 2007. They are currently on a Canadian tour, making a stop here in Vancouver tonight. The release of their 2009 album, Ten Day Poem for Saskatchewan, has brought them high praise from critics across the country, as well as fans. Case in point, they recently took home the Rogers Fan Choice Award, and they've uh, already showed me their nice new Rogers phones they have. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they're here in the studio. Two of the members are actually cousins in this band, and I have the two cousins right here. Dave McKeithrin and Ryan Wayne McKeithrin are in uh, the Alexis Management Studios. Welcome, gentlemen, from the Warped 45s. Hello, sir. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be one of the grunting and grunting. I'm glad you did that, because that fits in with uh, our subject today. About uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm imagining that you, the result of the sound of your voice there may have something to do with what you did last night. But we'll get to that later. Uh, thank you for uh, being here, by the way, guys. Oh, Great to have you. Um, and uh, is, is this actually your first tour out as, a, as the Warp 45 to Western Canada? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We went to uh, the East Coast in July. Right. This is the first time, even uh, the first time I've been west of Thunder Bay myself. Both Ever. of us. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Both yeah. of us. It's all new. Okay, so you were Ontario guys. Yeah. Born right. and raised. Yeah, all over Ontario. I guess uh, everyone from the bands from a different a different part of Ontario, mm -hmm. ranging from uh, up around Timmins in the North End to uh, Waterloo to Oshawa to Algonquin Park. So. Okay. Now, I suppose that the, the, the next question that sort of seems natural from that is if you're from Ontario, the album, uh, Ten Day Poem for Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. uh, explain uh, the title to me. Uh, Ryan, do you want to appeal to that one? Well, I guess um, Ten Day Poem for Saskatchewan is, is uh, drawn from a poem, uh, from a book of poems. Uh, a friend of, of Dave, uh, my cousin Dave here, is, is uh, David Seymour, is a poet from, from Parkdale who uh, wrote this beautiful poem. 10 day poem for Saskatchewan and uh, for me I thought that the, the lyrics of this song which Dave put to music really sort of in a lot of ways summed up the, the sort of uh, the feelings of, of, of the band and I thought sort of summed up the feel of the album mm -hmm. and so there was a tough decision when we were when we were deciding what to name the album but mm -hmm. uh, everyone sort of agreed on that title it just sort of it sort of seemed nice it was very Canadiana the imagery that it creates is sort of something that you know, inspired us. So hopefully, when when other people hear the title and, and actually listen to that song, which you know, I think David Seymour, the poet, did such a great job on those lyrics. So now, if you those are only half of the uh, poem, actually. Okay. I cut it down. It would have been an eighteen verse poem for our <laughs> song. So <laughs> you can get the it in its entirety on Brick Books if you're interested. Okay. 
now, fantastic poet. Yeah, and uh, and you'd mentioned earlier that this is the first time going west of, would you say, Thunder Bay? Uh, yeah, okay. That's so. the furthest west. Ron and I did a duo tour about two and a half years ago that we got as far as Thunder Bay. Okay, so this time on this tour you hit Saskatchewan. Sure. Yeah. Now, did it? Did, so, what were your impressions of Saskatchewan? Did it to tie into your feelings that you were uh, talking about, Dave? Do you want to? Well, I, I, I was really hoping that it was a lot like the poem because I love the poem and I love the imagery from the poem. Um, so, driving through it, it was, uh, it was nice to see that it was as beautiful as a lot of the images that are in the book, the winter wheat, you know, and then um, certain verses like the horsehair dance floor. I didn't realize a uh, person told came up after the show and said that actually there is a bar about two hours outside of Saskatoon that is the last horsehair dance floor in uh, the country, as far as he knew. It, the dance floor is actually made of horsehair. Oh, really? Yeah. So he w and it was cool. He's like, he thinks he can get us a gig there next time. So I would love to sing that song on the bar that has the horsehair dance floor. Oh my God! No yeah. kidding. Yeah, it's you a verse that has the ho on the horsehair dance floor, prairie women two step in flat heeled shoes. Okay, right. Yeah, and but you didn't go to this bar. We yeah, I didn't even know. There. I didn't actually know what that was from. I thought it was just a, a good imagery of a horsehair yeah. dance floor, but I didn't actually know it was a literal reference to a certain bar. It is something, eh? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, uh, so now you've so you've, now you've tackled the Saskatchewan and you've made it you, you've made it out to all the way to the west coast. Let's let's talk a little bit about what happened before all this because you did mention that you you had toured as separate uh, solo artists. Dave, you were doing your solo thing. Ryan, you were doing your solo thing. So um, it, it, now you guys are we're working together as this camaraderie, obviously as a band. Is there is there some things, Dave, that uh, that you like better as as sort of the functioning as a as a full band unit now compared to how you used to do things? Um, with these guys, I think I like everything better as a band than I did playing solo. I have been in bands, not to trash them, but there, it's, it can be, it's a very hard relationship sometimes. It's like you are in this with four or five or however many people, and all of their personalities have to mesh, everyone's personal tendencies have to mesh, and that can be a very hard thing. I mean, it's hard enough to find a partner in life, let alone five people to travel around with, you know? and. Um, but obviously the music is, is more realized, especially with all these multi-instrumentalists and vocalists that we, we have. So I, I, and the fact that they're really amazing people and they're becoming some of my best friends besides being my family is just kind of a blessing on that. I, you know, I can't imagine doing the solo thing except for kind of as a break just to kind of work on new stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the diplomacy as, uh, as family members, Ryan, that, uh, that all works out okay? There's no... Uh uh, well, it's great rivalry. for me. No, it's yeah. fantastic. I mean, when I was growing up, uh, I had uh, my cousin Dave and my father and my uncle who were all, all writing songs and playing music, so that was a source of inspiration for me when I was a younger, you know, sort of songwriter. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. We are speaking with the Warped 45s from Toronto. Uh, gentlemen, on our, uh, our show today, we've been talking about uh, musicians and their, uh, their behavior, I guess audience expectations of bands, do we? Uh, want them to behave well, or uh, or do we sometimes like it when they do crazy things and we can live vicariously to them? Uh, what's your answer to that question, Dave? Do you uh, some of the bands that you like? Do you uh, like it when they're uh, true rock stars, or do you like them when they're nice guys? To a point, and I, I don't think that it necessarily has to be separate. Like I think that uh, there's some really good bands in this country that like to have a good time, like Elliot Brood, that I love the music of, and we were lucky enough to open for them a couple weeks ago at the Opera House. And it wasn't the first time of hanging out with them, and uh, you know they like to they like to drink as much as anyone and scream and play as, until they get kicked off stage, and but that they're also some of the nicest people you could ever meet. Like I don't think that the ego necessarily goes along with your desire to stay up and sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luckily, mm -hmm. yeah. so I guess that would be the line for me. I'm all for the people having a lot of energy and being fun and whatever. But then if you can also be open to people and respectful of other musicians, I mean that's that's the kicker. Well, what about the off-stage aspect of uh, musicians' life? Does that count for anything? Should uh, should they be scrutinized in any way, or or should you uh, you worry about that about what you do in your off time, Ryan? Well, I think if someone, uh, sort of to play on Dave's point, if someone's got a strong personal character, that's going to translate across all aspects of life. And uh, we're fortunate that all of our friends that are musicians are also also very fantastic people, and we really do enjoy hanging out with them. Um, the beauties, Dan Mangan, Elliot Brood, a really great a lot guys, of people you know? we've been lucky enough to play with lately have just been great people. I mean, it's such I, a 
I don't think they have the most Puritan views in the world. I don't think it's about that, but yeah. they're very great people. Okay. And, and in this in this uh, sort of roots genre of music across Canada, there's such a great support system too. There's no one trying to uh, step on your toes or pull on your beard. <laughs> <laughs> nice analogy. Yeah. So, uh, any stories you can tell us before we let you guys uh, go out of the studio? That uh, uh, there must be some debauchery that you can share with us. Uh, what is the what is the what is the most misbehaved you've been on this tour, Ryan? <laughs> Come on. I mis misbehaved? I mean, we're, um, we're... <laughs> I think we could probably admit to uh, a real affection to tequila. Um, as we play more, more and more people know this, and they tend to be bringing them to show, bringing their own bottles for us to share in. So um, we maybe drink a little bit too much tequila, which gives us a little bit of energy for later in the shows. Nice. Um, that's about. Yeah, I mean, probably. Everything else is squeaky clean. Even our van smells like strawberries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're sweet smelling guys. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, I guess if you want to bring you tequila shots, they can do so uh, tonight at the Railway Club. Is that right? Eight o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, okay, early show. show. Come Great. say hello. Introduce yourself. Good. Well, thanks so much for coming by, gents. Uh, and we're going to play the song from your album called Progress. So maybe, uh, Dave, can you set this one up before we play it? Sure, it's based on a character working at a, a dump in Toronto that's got some views on the, uh, the current state of the economy and where it might be going. All right, here we go. This is the Warped 45s. Progress is the song. Thanks again, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, guys. That was great. Mm -hmm. well, that was great. Thank you. Well, well really played. Good. Really well, good. Well played. <laughs> um, <laughs> we should have a good night tonight at the railway. Oh, man. Oh, okay. The, the railway. <laughs> just made this an amazing. Shots live. That's what we did. I can't wait. Yeah, got some good. We got some good shows on this tour, you know, for a first time tour. Yeah. The Railway Club and the, the Ironwood and Calgary is supposed yeah. to be a great venue oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so you you guys play as well. You play, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. 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 So what is your band? Oh, I play in a band called Analog Bell Service. Okay. Yeah. You do like a solo project. Yeah. 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 That's right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, the name spreads. What's that? Said the word spread. 